Our first major hurricane of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season is about to unfold in the Atlantic Ocean, and this long term could impact areas like Bermuda, the Greater Antilles, and even the United States as it continues to track to the west over the next few days and potentially will rapidly intensify. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Tropical Storm Aaron and why this is a concern for some areas. We're going to begin with what's happening across the country today and just to kind of give you a brief overview of what's happening right now. We do have a little storm system that's been ongoing for the last 24 hours in the Central Plains, which did bring quite a bit of severe weather last night to Texas and Oklahoma. We even had a late night little tornado risk that took place over in southeast Iowa. That is from the remnants of a little mesoscale convective vortex, which is basically a localized area of spin. Now that is now moving out and we're not expecting a whole lot more in the way of severe weather for the next few days. But if you're back over in the Midwest and even back up here to the Northern Plains, we'll have to watch for today, tomorrow, and all the way through Friday and Saturday for a more elevated threat of at least some isolated to scattered severe weather. Back over in the Gulf, we've actually been watching a very broad area of spin. And believe it or not, this is actually an area that the National Hurricane Center has outlined for a very low chance of tropical development over the next couple of days. This actually brought a ton of rain over to western Florida, brought over 12 inches of rain to Sanibel, Florida, just a couple of days ago. This will likely continue to spin very broadly in the Gulf, but due to the fact that it's not very favorable when it comes to wind shear and as well as our dry air here, it is likely going to struggle as it continues to track to the north. But nonetheless, it'll be something that we're keeping an eye on. Now, here's a more zoomed out view of our tropics right now. And this right here is actually Tropical Storm Aaron, which did form yesterday morning. This actually has fallen apart quite a bit over the last 24 hours, but it is deceiving because it is actually currently in pretty cold waters as of right now. But as we go into tomorrow, it is going to move into much warmer temperatures. And that is an area that we have basically no wind shear and hardly any dry air. So it's about to enter into a very favorable environment environment where this will likely rapidly intensify to a hurricane and potentially a major hurricane by this weekend. And here's a view of the entire Atlantic Ocean right now. We have three areas that we're keeping an eye on, one of which has basically no chance of formation over the next couple of days in the Gulf. We also have another small area just east of New England, which will probably not become anything either. And then this right here is obviously the big concern, Tropical Storm Aaron. It is very far away from any land right now. The closest thing is the Cape Verde Islands, which unfortunately, Tropical Storm Aaron has already caused seven fatalities to Cape Verde because of the major flooding it brought. So this is obviously a big concern for the long term if it gets closer to any land, which it probably will be as we go later into this week and eventually by the weekend, it'll approach the Greater Antilles, perhaps Bermuda, and then perhaps even the United States. And this is the official National Hurricane Center forecast for Tropical Storm Aaron. As of right now, it is again very far east in the Atlantic Ocean, but as we get closer to this weekend, it is expected to become a Category 2 hurricane and then likely a Category 3 hurricane, which would put this in the major hurricane status by around Saturday or Sunday. And then eventually as we go into early next week, notice there's currently no cone of uncertainty that goes farther out because the uncertainty grows a ton. But there is a very large area where this particular system could go. It could turn out to sea. That is one scenario. Another scenario is that this could kind of go between Bermuda and even maybe up the coast of the United States could end up impacting New England. It could also go between those two and go into Bermuda. It also could go in the direction of Florida. There is a lot of different scenarios with this. And in just a moment, we're going to break down every single scenario as this is going to be a pretty complicated forecast because of different upper level weather patterns that we are currently experiencing that is going to play the main factor into where this exactly goes and I'll also give you an idea of where I think it's going to go here in just a moment. Now let's talk more about the scenarios with Tropical Storm Aaron and we're going to begin with what's happening in the next seven days so this is between now all the way through about Monday of next week. Most models have this approaching Puerto Rico and the northern lesser Antilles by about Friday and Saturday and unfortunately with how close this is going to be to areas like Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles, we cannot rule out major impacts, especially since by this point, it will be making a run at becoming a major hurricane by this weekend. So big concern there. Now, as we eventually get into the very late half of the weekend and into early next week, our Bermuda high is likely going to be weaker by this point, which should steer this further off to the north. With that said, it is not fully a guarantee that this will turn off to the north because if the Bermuda high ends up being a little bit stronger, it actually could steer this further off to the west which is why the next 48 hours or so of Tropical Storm Aaron are going to matter so much. And the other thing I want to point out too is if this does track a little bit further down to the south and west and we do have a Bermuda high sitting here and another high pressure system sitting in the United States, those upper level weather patterns are going to kind of oppose each other, which would almost kind of slow this storm down and it will be a major hurricane almost undoubtedly by this point. And if this is near any land, we could have a potential for major flooding. So we need to keep a very close eye on this. Now in just a moment, we're going to talk about the long-term path and also 
also the long-term scenarios of Tropical Storm Aaron. But before we do that, we need to talk about today's sponsor, Delete Me. Your personal information, such as your phone number, email, and address are for sale right now across the internet. Scammers, stalkers, and data brokers all collect this information and try to sell it regardless of what impact it'll have on your life. And with all the data that I have online, this has always been a major concern for me. That is until I started using Delete Me. Delete Me is a hands-free privacy service that finds where your personal information is listed online and removes it from hundreds of data broker websites. Delete Me has already removed my data from over 100 websites and they scan all year long to make sure that data doesn't show up again. It's simple, effective, and honestly a huge weight off my shoulders. And I know all of you don't want to have to worry about doing this all yourself, so instead you can go to joindeleteme.com slash maxvelocity and use code maxvelocity at checkout to get 20% off on all consumer plans. And now that Delete Me is keeping all of our data safe online, we can lock in and get right back to the forecast. Now let's talk about the long-term scenarios with Tropical Storm Aaron. This is what it looks like right now and where it is currently located, which again is nowhere near land as of right now. But eventually, as we get closer to Saturday, this is expected to be sitting just off to the north of the Lesser Antilles. And by this point, it will likely be a hurricane. And this would also be the first hurricane of the season in the entire Atlantic Basin. And obviously, we're in the middle of August, a little bit later than what we had last year last year we were being spammed by hurricanes this year it's been a very slow start but it's obviously kicking into gear very quickly then eventually as we get closer to the end of next week this is what it kind of looks like with our ensemble members not very many models right now are bringing this in the direction of the united states there's only a handful that actually have it making landfall anywhere near the united states but the one thing i do want to point out is obviously this could shift further to the west the other thing i want to point out too is even if it stays offshore it could still kind of skirt up the coast which could cause some big problems along the coastlines including storm surge there could also be much higher wave heights and rip currents are going to definitely be a concern no matter really where this storm even is if it's way further to the east of the united states back over near bermuda there will still be some problems along the coastal regions so if you're going to the beach as we go into next week this is something that you want to be keeping a very close eye on but even then there's still about a 10 to 20 percent chance i think of a landfalling situation back over in the united states obviously a lot of the ensemble members still have this very far to the east but again the next 24 to 48 hours hours will play a major factor into exactly where this ends up going now what i just showed you were the american ensemble members this right here is actually the european model ensemble members and what's interesting about this is that it actually keeps a lot more of the ensemble members further off to the west of bermuda and keeps it actually somewhat closer to the united states now once again as i just mentioned there's not very many of these ensemble members that actually have this making landfall in the united states only a handful of them actually have it doing that but a lot of them have it at least close enough to the point where there would at least be some moderate if not major impacts especially to the immediate coastal regions with the potential for storm surge even the potential for some tropical storm force winds heavy rainfall all that sort of stuff now usually the west side of hurricanes do not produce much in the way of tornadoes but this is obviously something that we're gonna have to keep a very close eye on for all the other impacts that this could end up bringing and one thing that i do find interesting is that this right here is the european model and it actually has this fairly close to areas like puerto rico and the lesser antilles with at least some tropical storm impacts during the later half of the weekend into early next week and it makes a close appearance even to areas like the Bahamas by Tuesday and then by Wednesday and Thursday the European model has it really the furthest west out of any model right now has it very close to the Carolina coastline and even back over in New England which is the reason why I keep saying here obviously I know the odds of this making landfall in the United States may be low but it could again skirt up the coast which would cause its own problems and it may bring some tropical storm impacts with all that said there are a lot of scenarios that can still happen and this is still about eight to ten days out from now what I want to basically say is for anybody that is along the East Coast from Maine all the way back into Florida, even if you're back over in Nova Scotia, you should be staying weather aware. Just at least be monitoring this situation. We will have continuing updates on this upcoming hurricane. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. What I personally think is going to happen with this hurricane is it will likely just barely stay to the north of Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles. And then it will probably track somewhere just barely off to the west of Bermuda and then just east of the United States states which would probably be enough to at least bring some minor to moderate impacts to the immediate coastal regions along the coast anywhere from georgia all the way back up into maine but even then we could obviously see this go further to the west and i'm not still ruling out a potential scenario where this does end up going towards florida going towards the carolinas or even going towards new england those are all scenarios that are still in play and all those scenarios combined i would still give about a 20 to 25 percent chance of happening so it's definitely possible so definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware also the last thing i want to point out about 
about Tropical Storm Aaron is that majority of the models are bringing this to at least a Category 2, if not Category 3 intensity by about Saturday or Sunday. So again, this is likely going to be the first major hurricane of the season. It could get up closer to Category 4 intensity if it is able to intensify quick enough as it moves out of the cold water temperatures that it's currently in. A lot of the models right now don't necessarily know what's going to happen beyond the next 36 hours because of the fact that it's in colder water temperatures, but it definitely could rapidly intensify and this could end up getting closer to a Cat 4 at some point, which if it is a Cat 4 hurricane, it will likely still be far away from land, but obviously if it tracks further west towards the United States, there would definitely be some bigger problems there. But at least for now, it's likely at least going to be a Cat 3 hurricane by Saturday or Sunday. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Tuesday, and we have a marginal threat of severe weather in place back over in the Great Lakes region, including areas like eastern Wisconsin, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and then back over towards Detroit and Lansing, Michigan, including Chicago as well, where there will be a low threat of damaging winds and hail, not really expecting much in the way of a tornado risk. As we go into Wednesday, the threat of severe weather will shift back over to the northern plains where there's another marginal threat of severe weather in place across South Dakota, where I do think some isolated damaging winds and quarter to half dollar size tail will be a possibility. And then as we go into Thursday, the threat of severe weather continues across the far northern plains where we have a slight risk of severe weather in place. Biggest concerns will be damaging winds, hail, and a low tornado risk. It is a conditional threat, which we'll talk more about here in just a moment. So here's the timing of severe weather for today. We're expecting a few storms to fire up right around three to four o'clock across Michigan, back into central Illinois, where pop-up damaging wind and hail events will be a possibility basically any time from about two o'clock today all the way through about nine o'clock. And then after sunset, most of the storms will be falling apart, but a few isolated severe weather events are still possible in Indiana. And then on Wednesday, a few scattered showers and storms possible in the Ohio Valley and then back into the southeast, but not expecting any severe weather in the Midwest, at least through Thursday. I do think that'll change though as we go into Friday. And then back over in the Northern Plains, not really much in the way of storms today. There is a low chance of a few isolated wind and hail events on Wednesday. Thursday is a conditional risk, but if any storms do fire off in this region, there will be a chance for isolated large hail, damaging winds, and even an isolated tornado threat. But storms may not fire until after sunset, and if that's the case, this will not be much more than just wind across Canada and far northern Minnesota. I do think Friday and Saturday have the potential for more organized threats of severe weather in the Midwest, and we'll talk more about that in our next forecast. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. And a huge shout out to Delete Me for sponsoring today's forecast. If you want to check out Delete Me, it is the top link in the description below. Use code MAXVELOCITY for 20% off. And I really appreciate them sponsoring today's forecast. Could not do everything that we do on this channel without the amazing sponsors that we have. Thank you guys all so much again for watching. We'll see you guys all again in the next video.